Nice. And let's see. Looks like we're on. Okay. Give me two seconds of silence and All then right. go ahead and jump in. All right. We are doing it live. Hello. Welcome to Book Club Schmuck Club. I'm Kristen. I'm William. And we you're really loud. I'm always really loud. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know if you're being... I think you're being particularly loud. I'll try to turn how, it down. I'm how does sorry. It, how does it look on the thingy? Do we look like equal? Well, yeah, we're fine. Okay. Okay, cool. It. Yeah. I didn't know if you're going to be like screaming in their ears or whatever. Not the whole time. All right. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. This is Book Club Schmuck Club. Book Club Schmuck Club. And we are going to talk about the book The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. That's right. Yeah. Uh, if you guys are interested, this is going mm -hmm. out live. Mm -hmm. So if you happen to be catching this live, go ahead and jump into the chat on yep. YouTube. Make sure you're subscribed and everything. Uh, we will be monitoring that, so be careful. Uh, if you are not watching this live, you can know that this is also going out as a video show on our YouTube channel. Yes. Uh, but, of course, uh, Book Club Schmoke Club is a podcast first and foremost on mm -hmm. iTunes and Stitcher. Yeah, so, so subscribe don't there. Don't look for a lot of visual elements. Exactly. Yeah. But uh, you can watch our ugly mugs. Yes. So, The Night Circus. Yes. Your history. Hogwarts, a history. Mr. Roro Surrey himself, Rock Shea, yep. suggested that we read this book. Mm -hmm. in a previous live episode yeah of book club schmuck club he yep. was in the chat yes Duh. he was in he was up into chat i do that's like people don't go to the club anymore yeah. they go up into chat that's what he do um who do you do who do you do so that's my history with the book okay um, that's mostly my history i've heard of it before and you'd heard of it before he recommended it yeah really yeah okay that's yeah. cool it was a big hit when it came out a few years ago. Evidently, that's yeah. what I that's what I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. uh, what so were that's your pretty much it? What were your expectations going into it, if you had any at all? Um, hmm, I was kind of optimistic. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I really I think we spoke about this before, and I never know how to put my finger on it as far to uh, as far as how to describe it, but like. I feel like I sometimes don't end up liking the same kind of like, ugh, I don't mean this like mainstream novels. That's not what I mean. But like, I don't know, like hit like drama kind of novels and stuff. I feel yeah. like I sometimes read them and then I'm like, I don't really like them as much as everybody else did. Yes. So I think it's that's interesting. what I was kind of wondering was going to happen here. But the weird thing is that we, we do like hit novels because I, I would say that yeah, I'm on the same page as you. that's not the right word. I, don't I know. can't like, phrase it like critically I feel like acclaimed. Dramas, I don't know. Like when it's like. Stuff like this. There's like a particular vibe that I pick up from books like this. Yeah. Where it's like it it was huge enough on book lists, yeah. but it didn't hit like my radar. Uh-huh. Which means that it wasn't super mainstream. Uh -huh. Like if I know about something, it's only mainstream. because it's one of the most popular things in the world. Yeah. I don't know obscure things. I Well it depends on the category. I don't think that's true. Uh maybe not of I like know obscure books. things about pop culture stuff, yeah. but I don't know obscure I don't know obscure movies. I don't know obscure books and stuff. So, like, I, I feel like if this didn't really hit that high, uh -huh. then there's probably something about it that, like, people appreciate and respect, uh -huh. but maybe it isn't super duper for the mainstream. It's true. It wasn't like the Goldfinch. What is that? Or whatever. That's a humongous hit book from, like, last year. Huh. Yeah. Well, I haven't heard of it, so Massive. it can't be that good. <laughs> well, I started to read it and I couldn't finish it. Um, it's it's also it's massive, like big hit, but also like humongous. Oh, really? Um, but some people love it. Some people like me. Yeah. Tried to get into it and then couldn't. Well, with this book, all I knew this about is a it. Gone Girl. Sure. Okay. There you go. Gone Girl is like a drama book, that was so popular. Yeah. That people people just would not shut mm -hmm. up about it. Mm -hmm. uh, this seems like a book big that Christy I guess it got included. super popular. <laughs> big Chrissy included. I said big Christian. Oh, included, included. right, yeah. Uh, this, it seems like this book was super popular, but people were very much able to stop talking about it, I guess. Yeah, I think so, it was popular, but it was not like, God, you, can you believe what happened at the end of the Night Circus? Like, right, yeah. Like, I didn't yeah. Really hear any big hullabaloo about it. So, from having just read, hey, I know you. Hey. How are you, hon? We going out live, peep. Oh, good. Look, there's a dog here, everybody. Hi. And my wife. Not just a dog. Yeah, anyway, I um, fair enough. I so, like from just knowing what I knew from reading like the Amazon summary, yeah, like people already are like quick to go like, this might be the new Harry Potter. This is this the the yeah, second coming of Harry Potter. Probably more and because it was like of that era. 
Yeah. Or whatever. But but it was 2011. Yeah. Like when did Harry Potter stop? Uh, I bet it was like a little before that or something. I don't know. Mi- yeah. So so Harry There's Potter was magic already gone. Because I I I've been struggling to. I. I feel like when I, I can't verify this, I'm mm-hmm. kind of making this up, but mm-hmm. it, it feels right to me. Uh-huh. I'm betting you that when Harry Potter was at the height of its fame, uh-huh. there was a deluge of books about like kids that are definitely like I mean Twilight kind yeah, of yeah, is, yeah. is one of those things where it's just like oh these these are kids that are magical or are yeah. mystical creatures in some way. Yeah. So I was trying to figure out: Do I think that this book is one of those things where it's like? Well, Harry I Potter's don't. big, so here's a book about magicians. Yeah. Or is it like this person just wanted to write a book, mm-hmm. and then their agent was like, "Well, it's not going to sell unless you can sell." Is like that sweet like or get, maybe get they me some like teen drama magicians. Well, that's what I'm saying. And yeah. then somebody else that's more like the marketing, like Aaron Morgenstern, maybe just wanted to write a book, uh-huh. and this is the story that he she. Uh, I she, think she, I guess. Aaron yeah. is usually like E R I N, yeah. yeah. Uh, like A A R O N if it's a guy. True. A A R O N. Yeah. So like maybe Aaron Morgenstern, she just wanted to write this story. Yeah. But I'm saying that maybe marketing people were uh-huh. like, no, we're gonna shell it as the new Harry Potter. Do you think you're talking to Bobby right now? Why are you talking to me like this? How <laughs> dare you talk to me like this? I don't know. I'm kind of tired, so I'm kicking it up a notch. Um. But like I feel like it could have been in the marketing, yeah. That it's to try to get some of the, the buzz off of being Harry Potter like. So I don't know if it's like this is derivative mm-hmm. of Harry Potter or it's a real story, and then mm-hmm. they tried to sell it as being similar to Harry Potter. Does that make sense? Kind of. I think it's a reach. Like I don't think it's like Harry Potter. Oh, I definitely no. I don't. I but should I also don't say even, I yeah. don't think it's like Harry. Yeah, Potter. Yeah. 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 But what are you basing that on? Just that you're guessing that it was around Harry Potter? No, time? they're saying that on like Amazon. Oh, they, they like oh, refer like to the yeah, 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 yeah. Re- reviewers and and well, like and it's being marketed as it's like Harry Potter. Really? Like yeah. The, oh well, then I guess so. I guess that reviewer guy who's in the Bobby voice did say that. Yeah, that. that I well, mean, that's, um, marketer guy. I'm not just making up a thing and just yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, this is actually like based on like things yeah. I read about the book and people saying it's like Harry Potter. Yeah. Like I, I yeah, don't probably just I don't think it has that, anything think. to do with Harry Potter. Yeah, necessarily. I guess just around the same time or whatever. I guess I don't know. Yeah. Um, all right. I'm sorry. Do, do you have a, a summary? I do. Okay. Um, because I should also say I listened to the audio book. Yes. To get some sweet I. Jim Dale in. I my would say, life. well, that's some Harry Potter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're it's like a bit of fried Harry. Sure, that's a phrase. Yeah. Well, it's like, but that's another one of those things where I'm like, fried gold. To me, it's like, which one came first? Is it that they were they got Jim Dale and coincidentally right. he's from Harry Potter, or is it like let's get the Harry Potter guy because we can continue to market this as being yeah. in the in the same wheelhouse? Maybe. I mean, it is kind of like darkish matter that has a magical bent. Yeah. Maybe, maybe Jim Dale loves that. Yeah, that's his thing, and it's, it's British, I guess, right? Like. I guess I don't know because I think a lot of it is taking place in New York or something. So I was like, "Is this supposed to be like? Are these people living in Britain, which they right. probably mentioned? I think it is actually. Or yeah, is I it just no that idea. everybody's British because it's Jim Dale reading it, who is British? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Couldn't tell you. I have no idea. But why don't you give us that summary so we can really right. uh, dive into the book? All right. So this is the Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. A dark carnival deception, sleight of hand, and romance. Or are they all one and the same? Okay, so magic is real, and there are these rival magicians who apparently like to find protégés, then pit them against one another. They find younglings to do it, named Celia and Marco, and they know they're training for a competition, but they don't know exactly what, when, or against who, just that it will be using their magic powers. Marco's instructor, Mr. A.H., gets to set the terms or something this time, and he positions Marco to work with a man named Chandrish, who's a flashy rich dude, and he's going to open a circus, a night circus. Bingo. <laughs> I don't get how, but Mr. A.H. knows Celia will join up and the action will somehow begin. But does he anticipate that Marco and Celia will have the hots for each other? I think not. There are like 50 other characters, including Marco's poor sort of girlfriend, the fortune teller Isabel, who can totally tell something is up with Marco and the pretty new magician Celia. Also, Tara, one of the investors in the circus, can tell something weird's going on. These illusions Celia and the other... P- uh, these illusions Celia and the other perf- the others perform every night seem mighty real, and she's curious. 
When she goes to talk to Mr. A.H. about it, she catches a glimpse of something curious. Celia's father, who is also invisible. Did I not mention that? Somehow, right after being on to him, she's hit by a train. Coincidence? One of the other circus performers doesn't seem to th performers, performers doesn't seem to think so and tells Celia. She's noticed everyone connected to the circus is basically untouchable, never even getting the sniffles, and wonders what people with so much magical, co magical control could do with it if they were unhappy. We leave off with Celia and Marco's flirtation finally getting real, like they hold hands but very sensually. But they have to duel. How's this going to work out? Mm, yeah. Yeah. So I'm glad you read that Uh huh. because I had a very hard time. I had to read the Wikipedia page to help me. Really? Yes. So, okay, because you yeah. told me already that you like the book. I do. And I definitely, I'm not going to say I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't think I know anything about the book. Uh -huh. I, I swear to God, every time I tried to listen to the book, yeah, it was like, I I hate idiot guys that will just be like, I can't watch that chick crap. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Like you, yeah. they're, they're like they're totally uh, for real people like that yes. that are just like, chick flicks put me to sleep, and I would yeah. never call something a chick flick or anything. Yeah. I'm not calling this a chick flick. I'm using yeah. that as an example. Yeah. Every time yeah. I'd put this book on, I would like. Even up until the end, mm -hmm. I heard them go like, you know, whatever. I'm making this up, but it was like, uh, Celia and Marco held hands. Uh, the end. Yeah. Part three. I heard yeah. part three, and I was like, oh, that's beyond where we're supposed yeah. to be. Uh, I don't even know what just happened. Yeah. I rewound three minutes just to hear the final three minutes of it. Yeah. And I was like, all right, pay attention. And then all of a sudden, I heard him go, part three. Yeah. I was like, I fucking zoned out again. They're pretty much just sensually holding hands, like I said. This book is like, like. Nyquil, yeah, but I'm awake. Yeah, it it, it my brain will not allow me ah, to, to focus Roro. on it. Hey, Mr. Robo Sir is hey. in the chat right now. Rock Shay, who hey. recommended this book. Hey, hey. Um, I I needed. To, I read the Wikipedia too, mm -hmm. and I was just like, where? Where is the story? Like, I uh -huh. part part of it is like it's my fault because I just couldn't do it mm. but part of it ev i feel like every time that i tried to check in it was just going like i swear to god every time that i started listening again they'd just be like the lights are big and flashing and as you walk through the halls I do not like those parts at all oh there were more of them than i realized second person yeah. just like you're walking into it's the circus too. and you see the yeah the big tent is looming large ahead of you and yeah it I have always had it. So creepy pasta stories, those yeah. like horror stories that are just written by weird anonymous people on the inter internet. Roche says that he couldn't listen to the audio and the print was better. Well, maybe I'll have to jump into the print for the second half, Mr. Roro Suri, which <laughs> I prefer calling you that. I know, I like Not, it. I, I can say Roche, but Mr. Roro Suri is so it official. Good. I yeah. like it. Um, maybe I'll have to read it for the second half because mm -hmm. I honestly like I did my best and I, yeah. I came out with very little that I, I remember yeah. from the book. I don't like the way that D Jim Dale says, thank you. Thank you. Did you notice yeah. that the, they say thank you constantly in this book? I didn't pick up on that. All the that's time. Maybe, that's one of those things where like you're bothered by something and then you just notice it everywhere. Maybe. Yes, it's I also because the British people are so polite. Yeah. There's like, thank you. Thank you. Um, oh, but those second person parts. So, there are a lot of like scary stories on the internet that yeah. are some of them are written incredibly well, yeah. and they're just they're just frightening because yeah. when you give everybody the ability to put stuff online, mm -hmm. people who maybe not wouldn't write otherwise just write yeah. new interesting things. And so there are horror stories with tropes that have never existed before, and they're amazing. Yeah, there are also thousands that are just written like so you wake up and you're on your couch and you look down and there's your cat and why who I, writes like that who writes you. You do this, and then you see that thing, and then this happens to you. Like, that that does not immerse but me. But who is phone? Yeah, but who was phone? I love but who was phone. So you're with your honey, and you're making out, and her phone ring, and you answer, and it says, you best get <laughs> leave my daughter alone. So you say, hey, your dad's on the phone. She say, but my dad dead. Then who was phone? I love that one. It doesn't immerse me yeah it takes me right out of it yeah and kind of frustrates me yeah because like i'd rather they just be like like have a character that's just going like, i don't get what the point is it is just distracting well it's like the total it's just the show don't like tell break. thing yeah, yeah yeah it's kind of that they're showing they, mm -hmm. they think i think i i suspect that they feel aaron morgenstern feels like she's 
doing she's showing you Mm -hmm. she's saying like the archway of the tent is in front of you and look up and it Mm -hmm. says the Cirque de Rive on the banner yeah she thinks that she's showing that to you it's giving you a mental image of of where you are and what's happening which is working in that way a little bit but what that that is Mm -hmm. that's just an information dump Mm -hmm. of what the setting is Mm -hmm. like that's like what show really would have been is somebody like you know a, a two characters walking through the circus and they interact in some way with the tent or mm-hmm. something like that or you know like they're like they they feel small against how massive the tent is mm-hmm. that's showing yeah that's putting you in the shoes of a character that that and it elicits a feeling in you mm-hmm. it evokes like a sense of what the world is like yeah but she's trying to show it from i think somebody who's seeing it, it would because a person who's like working on the circus thing wouldn't necessarily be thinking all that stuff they just feel it's like their job you know what i mean so yeah she's trying to convey like the wonder of it yeah but i, I definitely just, just don't like the f- second person or whatever it is i just think it's clumsy i, yeah. I just wouldn't it's supposed to be like kind of an act break and kind of like I a. Guess. I just wish those parts weren't in there uh, like every time that break. i like every time i zoned in it was either that or mm-hmm. just two characters talking to each other, and I had no idea who was who. Yeah. Or what was happening. Yeah. Well, there are so many characters. There are a lot of characters. That is super confusing to yeah. me. So. It's it's fun when you condense it. Mm-hmm. I think that it's really cool when you go, like, what's the guy's name? Prospero? Yeah. Prospero the magician. Yeah. Whose daughter uh-huh. is dropped off on his doorstep and yeah. she's able to break shit and mend it. Yeah. Like that's kind of cool, but then when it gets into this like even the even the whole overarching conceit of there being some sort of a contest mm-hmm. where he and his friend rival. Yeah, I guess so. Uh his frenemy. His, yeah, his frenemy. Mm-hmm. It it's like um Professor Xavier and Magneto. Yeah. Where it's like they're friends but there's a competition of yeah. some sort and so they're kind of enemies but kind of not. Yeah. Um that whole thing I think is super muddled and just mm-hmm. like I don't it's intentional that we don't yeah. really know what it is, but I kinda don't like that. Yeah. Um Rower wants to know how are the time jumps? Confusing. <laughs> to Very me. confusing. <laughs> especially when you're listening. Uh, when yeah. they if they start a chapter and they say like eighteen sixty three, mm-hmm. I'm not going like, all right, we're in eighteen sixty three now. I'm going like irrelevant get to the story I know. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. the next time they say a year i'm like i don't know if that's before or they after. may as well not have years i have exactly. no idea i'm not paying yeah. attention to the year yeah. i feel like maybe in a book if you're reading it you could thumb through and check what the year was in the previous thing and see where you are now yeah. or something but not in an audio book yeah i definitely have to do that in real books because for some reason that's something i do in general whenever there are time jumps with it i like i almost always disregard the thing that's at the beginning of the chapter yeah. i'm like well it's just a heading. Yeah. And then I don't know what the hell's going on. Absolutely. I do the exact yeah. same thing. So the whole time, I'm just lost in time. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I'm just floating out there. Uh, <laughs> just floating out there in the ether. Yeah. Um, well, what, what, do you, what, do you, what are your thoughts? I, I'm, I'm uh, steam, steam railing? Steam? Steam railing. I'm steam railing yeah. through the whole thing. Steam railing. Um, it's another one of those things where I'm like, I like it. Yeah. I don't love it. Yeah. Um, I think that Aaron Morgan Stern's a really good writer, so I've enjoyed that part of it. I like sure. the descriptions of things and everything. I really liked everything pretty much before the Night Circus. I enjoyed Prospero and Celia when she was like a kid and stuff. I did too. And the mystery guy and who was later called Marco, but he didn't have a name because yeah. the guy just called him like the boy or whatever. Yeah. It was simpler. It was yeah, like this whole interesting because I really like her writing, but there I just like don't know what the hell's going on. Personally. There's just so much convoluted. Like I crap. okay, so like I still am confused. So there's like the clockmaker. The clock clearly is gonna play into this. Explain the clockmaker. This is new to me. I don't know. There's okay. a there's a guy who made like a really great clock for the circus. It's a great one. <laughs> <So> <laughs> yeah, it's great. Why well, you see this thing? <laughs> it's like has like clouds going across it like i think it turns into like the different times of day yeah on the clock face as it goes or whatever and for some reason i thought it was like an old man because he was doing he's the clockmaker is german so he's doing like a german accent no i just got i i guess i just associate that with like an old man or something and then i think he and celia kind of like she gets in touch with him because he's also a um there are these people called like what are they called like reviews or something who dreamers like, right because it's yeah, the yeah, Cirque yeah. du Reeve, so it's the yeah. circus of dreams yeah so they're like super fans basically yeah who go to the circus whenever they can they're kind of like dressed in like circusy garb or whatever so he's kind of like 
the boss of those because he's written a bunch of articles about the circus and she's enjoyed his articles, so she got in touch with him without telling him that she's part of the circus yeah. and asking him about the clock because I guess he had said that he made the clock and she finds it fascinating. But it was also confusing because you only find this out from, like, kind of from his perspective. Like, it's not like you are Celia or in her head and she's like, man, this clock is, like, really getting me or whatever. Yeah. It's just that he's like, oh, I've been writing with this, like, Mr. Clock Man has been writing to this woman and whatever. And then she reveals that, Okay, the clockmaker is middle aged. Okay, thank you, Roro. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm just calling you Roro now. No, he's it's our buddy. Nice. He's yeah, Roro. I like Roro Sir. Although I'm going with Mister. So. <laughs> yeah, Mister Mister Roro Sir sounds more official. Let me yeah, do that. Yeah. But um, but then they like, did they go on like a semi date kind of like? I don't know. I so that was confusing. Yeah, I, I mean, um, I really don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> um, I'm sorry that this is like, this time. The, the, there's only so much that I was really able to glean from the style it's written in and stuff. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I just couldn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just couldn't do it. I don't know. I don't know what's happening in this book. Well, it's, what else is going on with you? This is well. This in is life. like this is this is like trying to cheat your way through a class uh-huh. to me this time. Yeah, this the, is tough. It is. The last time that this happened was when we read Life After Life, where I, I was just like, this happened to me more recently. Try. Like I I have been thinking about Life After Life with this though. Yeah, where it's just like I'm I'm trying. So I think it was another like kind of mainstreamish book that I know had like a lot of good reviews and everything that I ended up reading was like uh, mm. yeah, I I don't remember. I don't remember yeah. now. Um yeah, uh, this is also like so uh, good segue. Mm-hmm. Uh this month, this entire month, uh-huh. I probably could have used something a little more punchy. Uh-huh. There's no way to predict that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like I'm so I'm focused on other things this month. Like what? Like you and I are trying that diet with no sugar, no uh-huh. bread, and no cheese, and it's been yep. super easy. But yep. I feel like maybe it would have been more exciting this month if, if we were reading something with like real energy or steaks yeah. or something, because like it would be fun to get lost in something. Yeah. This time it's like it's homework. Yeah. And I just kind of don't want to do homework while I'm already like focusing on other things a yeah. little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah, I can see. So that. like I I I almost wish we had gone with something that's like fucked up scarriers yeah <laughs> like i would i think we should know. read like psycho 2 or something next oh my god yeah. i forgot yes yeah. we absolutely should yeah yeah i would love to do that because we're, we're so we have to we're gonna have to get that book as like a used paperback too oh okay, which like because i don't think it's on the kindle well, at least it wasn't on the kindle store two years ago when we read the first one or whatever yeah but uh oh man yeah good call thank you all right that actually makes me excited yeah. like not for this book obviously but yeah. uh, for the future yeah um yeah i just i don't know i i just yeah th- this book i just could not try as i i did yeah could not do it well maybe print will help maybe yeah maybe print will help yeah um i think uh, so i'm confused about the contest idea i am too and I think it's intentional, right? Like they're yeah. they're they're trying to they not. They don't give know you what it is. I don't think. Yeah, no, yeah. they don't. They don't. They know that they are, they're being trained. So mm-hmm. Prospero is training Celia, right? And Mister Ah, yeah, <laughs> Mister Ah. Is it really Mister Ah? That's definitely Mister A H. Oh, okay, <laughs> but yeah. So he's training Marco. Yeah. And we have no idea for what. Yeah. And they fall in they love. Know it's magic. So in my in my head, like I I. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I uh, yeah, Mr. Roro Surrey, Rakshay. I know. Is that okay that we just keep calling you Mr. Roro Surrey? You have zero reason to yeah. like apologize for this book. No, I, I'm not at all. open People to love reading this book. Yeah, I'm open to reading any and all books. Yeah. But I mean, I'm just gonna. I can't not say what I think about it. You know, I'm happy to read it, and I'm I'm overjoyed to be getting recommendations from listeners. Yes. And I'm glad that you enjoy the show enough to give us a book. That you enjoyed to read. I don't mean to insult it, insult you yeah. through it. No, I just you know it's it's the book as as I'm uh, as I'm getting it. Yeah. If you enjoyed it, I'm glad you enjoyed it. No, I would never awesome. say something is objectively bad. I just I'm just not into this. Yeah. Um, but so I've been I've been trying to figure out this contest. Yeah. A little bit, and it's like it's a little Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. Because they're obviously they're, it's like a star-crossed lovers kind right. of thing. They have to compete, but they're right. falling in love. Right. Um, it's a little Hunger Games to me, because yeah, so. I I either think I don't think that well, they would they go with it against each other, so I can see that. And I yeah. think that they're going to beat the competition by not playing at all. Yeah. And I think that they're essentially going to like Katniss and Peeta it. I figured that something like that, because they're definitely not one of them's not killing the other. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We'll both win the contest. We'll yeah. both fall in love. 
I wonder if they're going to like bewitch time or something. Well, wasn't there a time? Yeah, because she fi- – actually, that's probably what's going to happen. The first thing that she fixed in front of Prospero was – or like broke a watch and then put it back together or whatever. I thought it was a teacup. Well, she did – okay, maybe that's – she did that too. So maybe the watch was like second. Oh, I'm sorry. The guy who didn't even read the book is able to best you. Well done. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, she maybe she did a watch when she was doing it in front of Mr. A.H. or whatever. Yeah. And so then she – I was that's kind of like a thing with yeah. the watch. And then maybe she's going to do something with the clock and it's going to – I think that that's probably right. Yeah. I think that that was setting something up for the future. Yeah, probably. Um, Yeah. And then, and then teeny tiny – like this is like a stretch, mm-hmm. but it does make me think a little bit of the Triwizard Cup in yeah. Harry Potter, where it's just like there's a thing going on, and like we're not really <laughs> like it's dangerous, but it's kind of not. And yeah. yeah, have they been competing, or is there a competition to come? It's to come. It's to come. Okay, because I I was almost wondering if it was like something if, if they were going to be judged somehow on the ways that they lived or no, something I mean, weird like that. Not that we know of, as far as we know, it's like. They didn't know when it was going to begin or something like that. I don't really understand how they knew, like, that she would definitely audition for the circus or whatever. Yeah. Like, did they just figure that they put together a magic thing and this person would come because she's magical? I guess. I I mean, she – we're in a world where magic's not real, right? No, it is real. Aside from, like, them. Like, in the circus, do they do real magic? Yeah. There are a couple moments where they're, like – not everybody does it, but like okay. they do. Maybe that's with the roomie then, because yeah, people seem to really respond to the fact that she has abilities. Yeah. So I was wondering if that meant that no one else does. But yeah, then some people do, I guess. Not many though. But then I. But you can teach them apparently because she seems like she was like almost born with it or something. Oh. And then Mr. H taught it to Marco, like he like. Picked him up from the orphanage or whatever. Oh, he was just a total rando. Mm-hmm. I assumed yeah. that Mr. A.H. picked Marco because he had, like, I'm almost like the force in Star Wars. You can detect that somebody has it. So I thought that he was, like, detecting a little bit that this kid is magical. They didn't write it, at least. I think it was that he was smart, basically, so he'd be, like, trainable. Okay. They didn't explicitly say it, but maybe that was kind of what he was doing. Yeah, I just wasn't sure if it was, like, that these two characters are the only magic people involved, necessarily. Yeah. And then the the uh, the circus otherwise is just like a fun environment, but then I there are, there are things in it where it's like <coughs> you walk into a tent, you're like floating in clouds or something like that. Yeah. So it's like, well, that's not. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I think that that's why that woman Tara was killed because she was starting to like get on to the fact that it was actual magic. Right. Yeah. Marco has learned magic. Raksha is saying yeah, to yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. She right. was killed because she was getting close to understanding. Right. Yeah. So, obviously, there's some people who are not magical. True. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Good point. Yeah. Um, do you like the fact that so much information is being withheld? Because um, it's got to be – it's like a stylistic choice, I guess, that they're going to – I guess in the final two parts, they're just going to do, like, a massive reveal of what the contest is. Hmm. how they're competing and yeah. how they're going to win or lose. So No, I don't. Yeah. Don't you wish the, like there was <laughs> no, something to hold on to here yeah. in the beginning? To at least know what we're building toward. Like it'd be okay maybe if they still didn't know what it was. Yeah. But we did. Yeah. Like there should it would be nice if there was like a scene of Mr. AH and Prospero like talking about what's to come or something. I like would the love Joker that. Joker and Batman again. You know, yeah, sure, like old yeah. Old friend. Yeah, I would love yeah. that, especially like because that would also then be like dramatic irony because yeah. then we could watch Celia and Marco mm-hmm. fuck up and yeah. not realize they're fucking up because they don't know the terms, but we do. Right, right. That would be great. Right. I, I, I wish there was anything for them to like, like any dominoes that they would set up for us. Yeah. So we'd be like, ooh, I can't wait for someone to push these over. Yeah. But it's just like, oh, we're just in love with this circus and uh, yeah. the circus is nice and these people are all nice and. I guess the only kind of domino thing is that we can figure or know from the back cover that Marco and Celia will fall in love. I guess, but I don't which even we re- didn't know to begin with. I don't even really care about that. No, <laughs> me neither. I don't really care about all. I this feel p- bad for Isabel. Marco's mm-hmm. being kind of a dick. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, she she could take it down a notch though. She wears a bracelet that's her hair and his hair intertwined. <laughs> I didn't love that. <laughs> And then he, and then he noticed that. it, and she, like, tucked it away or something, which makes it weirder. 
I mean, that's a secret. But already, like the circus is. Weird. And like, how long is his hair? <laughs> yeah, I guess he must have really long hair. I guess, which takes down his attractiveness. Did she like track him down to watch him get a haircut and steal it, or was she able to? He has so understand. much hair that she can take somebody who doesn't even notice. They were basically living together, so I guess she could just like scoop it up. <laughs> but then she like took scoop it up. But then she took <laughs> scooped up some of your hair yeah. off your head. <laughs> well, <laughs> Let me get a scoop like of your hair. <laughs> maybe from like the bathtub or something. I, I guess, don't know. Yeah. And then she took some of her own hair, made a braid, and wore it like a bracelet. Yeah, I I did not know that. I didn't like that. That's weird. I still feel bad for her though. Yeah. Because he was straight up like they're still like basically dating or whatever, and then, you know, when before they did their like sexual hand holding or whatever. He, she was like, oh, y- you know, bet you're good at enchanting all the girls. Where he was like, well, it doesn't seem to have been working on you so far. Right. And she's like, well. And I'm like, you have a fucking girlfriend, you asshole. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. Why are you trying to enchant this bitch? Well, what else was it where we were talking about, like, exactly this thing? Was it was it Strike? Was it Cormoran Strike? Yeah, Rookshay loves the circus more. He's not a huge fan of the Marco and Celia ro- romance. Yeah, the characters are really, like, like not there. If this book were about the circus, I could get into the fact that the circus seems kind of big and crazy. Mm-hmm. I th- I think it's a cool idea that there's like this circus that like you have no idea when it's going to appear or not. Yeah. It shows up at night. It only runs from like dusk till dawn. Yeah. I always like stories like that too. Like yeah. I mean, I guess from dusk till dawn is probably the one of the bigger ones of that. But I think it's cool when it's just like this thing will exist tonight. Yeah. And when the sun comes up, it's gone. Yeah. Like, that's super fun. And it's kind yeah. of cool to apply it to a circus. Yeah, Just because a circus cool. is inherently sort of like... Although oh, it's not really like that, because they camp out for a few days or whatever. I know, but even still, oh, where it's like, they, they're they nomadic and they're yeah. gypsy-like, yeah. Yeah. Um, Don't care about Bailey. Who's Bailey? Bailey is the boy who... Um, like was dared to go to the circus during the day, which is why I just thought of this, and take something from it to show his family or his fr- his like friends yeah. and sister or something. Right. And then he meets one of those twins when they're like little Widget. kids. Uh, right. Pop it. Pop it. And then Widget's the brother. Widget. Okay. And then they meet again when they're old. I mean, it's, it's nice to meet again when they're older. It's kind of cute. Yeah. But I don't have a lot of use for Bailey. I don't have a lot of use for any of these characters. Yeah. I'd like to know what the contest is, and I I'd like Celia like and Marco, but like, I like them more separately. Yeah. Well, then it's probably not going to get any better from here. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'd like to know more about, like, like almost the same way that, what book was it? We just read it where I was like, I want to know the mechanics of the world. Oh, Ready Player One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where I'm just like, yeah, there's a bunch of shit going on, sure. Yeah. But this world seems kind of wacky and cool, and I kind of want to know the way that that works. Yeah. Like, in Harry Potter, they get into, like, the ministry, and they tell you about, yeah. like, the, the way oh, shit yeah, they happens, but they don't get you bogged down in it. It's just kind of like... Here's here's a little thing about the way the world yeah. operates, and now we'll continue with our adventure. Yeah. And here it's like there are just like two speeds. It's either like all characters, and mm-hmm. I don't know what they're talking about, and I don't mm-hmm. care, or it's all circus, and they're mm-hmm. just talking about how amazing the circus is. Yeah. And like, I I- if they'd said one or two Not things about how cool the circus was, I'd agreed. But like now it's like they just keep going like, this is cool about the circus. And that's cool about the circus. Yeah. And you love it. And yeah. like, I'm just like, well, no, I don't. No, I don't. Nice try. No, I do not. Captain Fluff, hello. Yeah. Welcome hello, to Captain our world, Fluff. Captain Fluff. Yeah. Who are you? <laughs> um, yeah, I just, yeah, I mean, yeah. that's. Th- th- uh, Tell me, Doctor, do you like the circus? I like the circus. I've been meaning to say that ever since we started reading this book. Yeah. Finally. <laughs> Finally. Whew. You can take a breath. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I think I'm good. <laughs> Sorry. This might be a short one. I don't. But Captain Fluff just got here. Well, Captain Fluff, we could just add a bunch of fluff to the end of this episode, I guess. Yeah. Like, I. I know. I I'm don't trying to think know. if there has been anything that I've had a real comment on. Um, Nothing happens in the book. I don't oh, know, you know it's what? Pretty long. I'll tell you something that's fucking cool as shit. What? Uh, Mr. Pompadour, what's his name? Pompin Prospero. Yep. Po- Prospero Cel- is Celia's papa. Yeah. And he's teaching her magic, and she's able to mend things and like yeah. fix stuff. So he breaks her yeah, fucking up. fingers and breaks yeah. her legs and shit, and tells her to fix it. Yeah. That's cool as hell. Yeah. It's fucked up. I mean, it's fucked up. It's not cool. Like, yeah. It's not cool, cool. <laughs> no, I know what you meant. Um, so does, what's his name? 
um, know that Prospero is invisible, um, Mr. A.H.? Because are they talking when Tara, like, gets hit by the train? Cause remember, I don't know. Because I think, I think they are. They, I'm not asking, I guess. I guess they, they were doing that, and I don't understand why. Because I would think that him being invisible is that he has, like, a one-up on his opponent in some way. Or are they somehow, like, um, Dukeberry? What was the guy in the last book? The, the Steve Wozniak type guy in Ready Player One. Oh, Og. Og. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, like, where it's just like, I've been invisible this fucking whole time. Whole time. And screw it. I've been watching you since before you even did anything impressive. And I've been, I'm like an angel. Like, yes. I, I wonder if it's like that, where it's just that Mr. A.H. and Prospero are just like, they've got this contest going, they've yeah. got their chosen heroes, Celia and Marco, yeah. and they're just going to observe a little bit and kind of like live in the margins. Yeah. They'd, no one knows the rules except for the two of them. Mm-hmm. Like, is, is it that like they're going to pull the strings? Like, I, I feel like the contest is ongoing. I feel like there's going to be a reveal. Well, they said that they've had others before. Yeah, but does that mean, I, I'm still not convinced that it's going to turn out to be like a tournament. Where it's like all of a sudden, now you're in the contest, Celia and Marco. Now your enemies go. Yeah. I feel like it's already been happening this whole time. I feel like the second Maybe. that Prospero I think and Mr. That makes AH, sense. I think you're right. Prospero knows is what Mark Shea said. Yeah. So knows what? I, I don't know, but yeah. uh, like I, I feel like it is that they are. They're they're both just kind of like being the the gods of this tournament or whatever and it's a race for yeah. them to, to one or the other to become super powerful or <laughs> something like that um last time captain fluff was here will was playing legend of zelda well that's uh <laughs> that's that's perfect i've been playing a shitload of the legend of zelda so much so that it's almost eclipsing eclipsing the podcast stuff we do on talk yeah. Bomb. i don't know if you've looked at like the news page or anything. yes it's a little extreme and i might have to back off oh, okay um oh, whatever but it's yeah fun. captain fluff uh uh uh, thank you for watching uh, the stuff. Check out the podcast too. This book club, schmuck club. So, um, I, I feel like it's that. Yeah. I feel like they are just kind of like trying to make sure that other people don't intervene. Yeah, I think you might be right about that. And and let Marco and Celia grow. Yeah. Together. And yeah, stuff. that makes sense. I think you're. Probably Which right. like maybe then it's a contrivance to get them together. Maybe it's like a plot to get these two yeah. characters to meet. And then see what maybe it's like a weird social experiment where you tell them that they have a. Uh, competition and they see what they do I mean at some point they're gonna have to actually be in a competition but I think you're right I think it started when yeah you're right I think it did it yeah. also reminds me a little bit of lost <laughs> then uh, where it's like Jacob and the man in black have rules ah. and they're playing this game and like they have shots of them on the beach like flipping coins yeah. or whatever the fuck they're doing I don't know playing they solitaire play, with yeah, palm leaves <laughs> <laughs> it's just like it's all the same like card chess yeah, like something and like Chinese ben, checkers, and then Ben Linus. What, what did his name turn out to be? Um, it was Ben. It was Ben. Oh, I think he had a fake Ben Linus was his real name. That was his real name. Yeah, his yeah, fake yeah. name was Henry Gale. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, and Ben Linus would be, go like, he broke the rules. Yeah, and you'll be like, well, what rules? What are the rules? What were the stakes? Like, they why never was, tell you? Yeah, why? Ugh, that show was so fucking annoying. Like, why did Ben Linus care so much? He loved the island. Oh my. God. That might be the answer for everything everyone did on yeah, the show that was fucking confusing. break with I loss. love it here. Ugh. Listen, that was a great show. Yeah, before you found out what the fuck it was about. Yeah, but even at that, they at least paid it off with some really, really upsetting moments between characters. I like, feel loving like each other great, forever. I feel like the show, for me, was a great show for the la- the first, like, two or maybe three seasons. And I felt like I was constantly going, like... This one will be good. This one will be good. And then I'll be like, yeah. what the fuck? But I just kept watching because everyone else was watching yeah. it. Yeah. It was the last show. I loved show. it at first. But then I just remember I was constantly frustrated. I agree. You so know I, what? I don't think it was great for me. I was going to say it's the last show where we would where we would like get together, get people together mm-hmm. to be like, we got to watch this. Okay. Now that it's yeah. over, let's talk about what just happened yeah. there. Except Breaking Bad did that. And Breaking oh, Bad totally. was awesome to the end. Yes. And all the way through. All the way through. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah I w- Sorry, Lost. I wish Lost was better. I yeah, wish they had a real mysteries that they really wanted to yeah. have a surprise ending to. I have um, a client right now who's been binge watching it. And um, I've just totally like not said anything about yeah. how much it sucks. But um, I've been like, oh, yeah, no, Lost is sweet. 
Man, I mean, but they did they did cool shit that like they did enough cool shit that I'm kind of willing to forgive the the fart ending. Especially it's not just the ending for me. I just remember like for a long time that I would be like, this detail sound seems kind of cool. Okay, maybe they're gonna do something good, and then yeah. I would be disappointed. I mean, th- but like there, there was a lot of cool stuff. There was though. a lot of cool stuff. There's like a character th- that's in a station that like his whole task is just to fill in a notebook of what yeah. other people are doing yeah. and put it in a pneumatic tube. And, like, they end up finding where the pneumatic tube goes, and it leads to just a pile of notebooks that yeah. no one ever read or anything. Yeah. So for years yeah, and so years and years, up. people would sit in that room writing in journals, jotting down, like, like the the intricate comings yeah. and goings and actions of other people only for it to end up in a landfill. Yeah. Like, that was fucking cool. Yes. No, um, there was a lot of cool stuff. There was a lot of cool stuff. A lot of social experiment shit, but they dropped yeah. that right away. Like I in know, season and that two, also seems awesome too. Like when you find out about the um, the Dharma Initiative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, what was the what was the doctor's name? Oh, God. Yeah, I don't remember. Damn it. Well, that's what I meant. The Dharma Initiative, and you're like, oh fuck, what is all this? And I this know. Is awesome. And then they drop that, and they're just like, no, it's about Ben and Jacob and the Man in Black. And you're like, no, I really would have rather like we had met like the guy that heads the Dharma Initiative. Yes, that was so exciting. And I'd be like, well, I discovered these fine attributes, and yeah. I decided to take advantage for myself. It was, it was that Asian guy who'd always been in the in the um, like instructional videos. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. What was it? I don't remember his name. It doesn't I don't matter. That's but right. and yeah. there was and then they introduced that character that could see ghosts, and he was cool, Miles. Oh yeah, that's right. Miles was great. And Mr. Echo. That show was great. Yeah, they're I don't know. They I, fucked it up. I would give it a shot. I just like I don't need to repeat myself. I just remember being constantly disappointed. Oh, for sure. But yeah. like I feel like once you already know that you're gonna be disappointed if you rewatch it, True. you're just like, Well, True. I'll, I'll watch out for the cool shit that exists in there. Yeah. I would I've do that. rewatched the finale in the years since. Oh, and really? it, it still is like I think we talked about that, yeah. What? Like, yeah. what do you? Wh- how are you defeating the I was island? Very unhappy with that. I don't understand what you did. But yeah. then there are moments where like Jack and Kate see each other, oh, and gosh. she hasn't seen him in like fifty years. Yeah. And she's like, "I've missed you. I've been waiting for you." Yeah. And it's so upsetting, mm-hmm. but human, and like, oh, it's so fucked up. It's yeah. really good. They th- like they totally farted out the the mystery stuff, but yeah. they really paid off like the character stuff. I think. Well, good thing because yeah. that's all they had left in the end. That's what they said. They were like, "Well, you know, actually, all along it's really more of a character study." It's yeah. Like, well, they were fucking the liars. Fuck it was. Yeah. yeah, yeah You're yeah. lucky that it was at least half about the characters because yes. <laughs> yeah. it was not all about the characters. No, not at all. Yeah. Um. Why did this just move? Because I'm working on the table. Oh, okay. <laughs> there's, there's no ghosts here, Kristen. <laughs> Why did this just move? <laughs> what? If I really thought that that was a ghost, do you think that'd be my reaction? But why else would it just move? I wanted to find out what it was. Why did this just move? There's like, I don't know, like a mozzarella stick container here or something. I don't know. It just <laughs> wiggled on its own. Yeah. Um. So I, I kind of feel like that's that that's a little bit what the contest is, though, too. Where it's yeah. like Prospero and Mr. A.H. going like, don't break the rules. There are rules. Yeah, I think you're right. I'm and sure like, that's maybe true. we'll never know what they are. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hope that's not true. Yeah. But I think, I think you're probably they right. They should have given us something more in the beginning if this was going to be massively important. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, don't I know do if not know. Going on here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me see. I'm trying <sighs> to think if there was anything else that I had thought wise about this. I'm like running through in my head. It's tough just because, it, like I said, it's so confusing. Yeah. But I do really like her writing style, like her descriptions of things and stuff like that. Like I've been enjoying that aspect of it. Okay. But there's just there's just so many people. It's it hard. It feels padded. It just feels like there's yeah. a bunch of shit in this book that that's of no consequence. Yeah. And maybe you could call it world building, but I just feel like it's a distraction. All I want to, yeah. if I'm here for a contest and two characters facing off against each other, that's what I'm looking for. Although I don't know, because I feel like you could say that about like Harry Potter or something. But that was well done. Well, I know that's that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't think it's necessarily padding. It was paced right, and yeah. with Harry Potter though, mm-hmm. you get things where it's like Harry is. Harry Rochet says some rules will be explained later. Cool. All right. So that's at good. least we'll ha- we'll have something. I yeah. wish we had something now, but like with Harry Potter, it'll be like like even take the first book, which mm-hmm. is probably the most like kidsy one yeah. of the the bunch. Yeah. Harry Potter's got to figure out where the Sorcerer's Stone is. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, so he's gonna he he starts here and it puts him on a little adventure and now there's a troll thing. Yeah. But, oh, Snape maybe maybe Snape let it in, and then yeah. characters go the off and like guy. talk about other shit. But like every every chapter you're getting another little piece of a puzzle mm-hmm. 
Or at the very least, you're watching Harry's thought process and yeah. how he's getting there. Yeah. And then here it's just like Widget runs around and, and Pippet yeah. is, is in there and just shit is happening. Yeah. And then they try to tell me how much I love it again. And yeah. <laughs> it just it's just you not don't. the same thing. There's no there's not a plot. Who loves the circus that much? Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> like like there's nothing there, there's nothing in this first book that I would really call all that much of a plot. Yeah. It's like at the beginning Well there is, but it's like it just doesn't get acted on yet. It's like the beginning of the book yeah. is saying we're gonna have a contest with these yeah. kids. Yeah. And then nothing happens until you get to the fifty percent mark where we are right now yeah. and the kids meet. Yeah. Like the, I, I pretty much. Oh my god. Like pretty much. everything in between those two points. Yeah. Has been just about meaningless. It could yeah. have been a few chapters about explaining what the there circus is like. Be. There's got to be. Who? There's. A, I think there's a lot that's meaningless, but there's got to be some sort of. Yeah. Payoff coming. Well, William, we'll find I'm sorry. Out. I said, I snapped at you and said, "Do you think you're talking to Bobby before?" I was. It's been bothering me this entire time. Has it really? Yeah. Why? Because it was mean and weird. <laughs> I was just trying to make a funny voice for the people out there. I know, but it's what you it's like you're a Bobby Shtick. So I was like, you think I'm gonna do this with you? I was just trying to entertain <laughs> the sorry. world. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, it's also just a a voice <laughs> I occasionally do. I know, that's part of why I feel stupid about it. Yeah, so how dare you? <laughs> right. That's what I'm saying. Um well, that's okay. I mean I don't forgive you. It's well, okay because it has fair. to be because I have to move on. I can't yeah. change it. I guess so. Um, Nor can I. Yeah. There's All I can, can do is done. apologize. Yeah. Well you're gonna lose I'm the sorry. contest, I gotta tell you. Right now I'm beating you, I think. I'm I'm more magically powerful. I don't think that's true. Or do I want you to believe that by showing vulnerability and apologizing? <laughs> and then I bring the pain. Well, I do know that you're an evil mastermind and I know you bring the pain too, so I gotta everybody knows that. I should probably yeah. Button up and fly straight. Probably watch out <laughs> watch <out> for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Shit. What else do we have to talk about? I'm sorry, I, guys. I, I'm not interested in stretching this to hit just to hit an hour or something. I know. I just feel... Like, if this is all we've got to say, I this know. is all we've got to say. I know. I think that's all I have. And I'm not going to make any apologies for it. If people love this <sighs> book, I'm very happy for them. Yes. I like a bunch of shit that people think is dog shit. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I'm not, you know... Yeah. Uh, I'm not condemning the book. I'm just sorry that I'm a little low energy and I feel a little snappy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how much fun this was to listen to. I think you're fine. Thanks, um, I think it's possible that we'll get just like a massive information dump in the final half. Mm -hmm. And it's possible that when we come back together, we're going to go like, oh, my God. Yeah. That's what it was for because yeah. of this rule. Yeah. That's what that was for because like of this totally rule. Big. You know what I mean? Like, so I'm I'm kind of optimistic about the end. Yeah. I'm gonna switch to reading. Okay. See if that helps out a little bit. Okay. I'm gonna stick audio. Okay. I have um, a lot of like liter like I have like homework to read, so this kind of works better for me. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, and we will we'll see what happens. Yeah. All yeah. right. Let me say this: it's not about the night circus, but think. Speaking of reading. Um, I've had a little bit of a break from my yoga teacher training recently, so I did a little pleasure reading on the side, and I've been reading The Dream Thieves, which is the second book of the Raven Boys thing. I was thinking about that today. Really enjoying well, it. Oh, you know why I was thinking about that? Why? I want to hear about that, but the, okay. the reason I was thinking about I won't go into I'm also not that far in it, so I can't oh, okay. go into like the whole thing. But I was thinking about that because I remember when we read that, I mm -hmm. was like, parts of this remind me of Dr. Sleep. Mm-hmm. And parts of this remind me of Dr. Sleep a little bit. Oh, really? Bit. Yeah, just kind of like this idea where it's like a circus. Family is not the right word, but like yeah. a group of people that all like are yeah. working for a common goal, but mm -hmm. they're kind of like like nomadic and they never stay in one place for yeah. very long. And they're, they're, they're magic. And yeah. like that's very much like the true knot, where it's just kind of like true. they rove around the world and they're made of magic. Also, real quick side note, at first I thought – well, actually, not even just at first, for a while – I thought Chandresh, who's the guy who like runs the circus or whatever, yeah. was Mr. A H. Oh. I thought they were the same. Because remember when um when Cindy was little and she was like, Why did he say his name is Alexander? Yes. And whatever. So He was lying about that. his name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So then Chandresh was like like throwing like darts at like a thing that said he was like almost the best illusionist or whatever. So I thought Mr. A H that I thought his real name was Chandrish, and he was pissed that he wasn't as good an illusionist as Prospero. Right. And that's why they do this whole thing together. And then at some point, 
I realized it was not. I was yeah, like, oh. it's, it's not. Yeah. Uh, are we not meant to know who Mr. A.H. is at all? Or is like, he is Mr. A.H. or this is a smokescreen and he's really Rush, someone I thought else. the same thing. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Rakshay thought the yeah, same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, well, because that was very confusing. Yeah. This book is very confusing. Yes. <laughs> it's very vexing. Yes. Um, what do you think? Is, is it a mystery who Mr. A.H. Little. turns out to be, or is he just Mr. A.H. is his identity, and we just... There's tr- got to be something to it, or else... Yeah. Like, it, it seems like they're hiding something, right? Yeah, because why else mention, like, you know, that that's not his real name, I guess. So, yeah, there must be something. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. don't know what, though. Um, um oh you were saying though about the raven boys the second book yes yeah it's really good it reminds so it is very angsty and dramatic like they are at tens and it r- i realize it reminds me of the kind of movie that i love from like the early 2000s like a teen like horror drama like kind craft. of thing yeah it's it's i'm trying to think what was that like it was kind of the boy craft, but like they were in. <laughs> I wish in there like was a movie called Boy something. Craft. <laughs> <laughs> the hell? What would that be? <laughs> I don't know. But I think they were in college and they were all angsty or something. Like, I don't think it was Skull and Bones or the Skulls or whatever. Or maybe it was. Yeah, maybe with, with Pacey. Skulls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is that what it's called? The Skulls? S- or skulls. I don't think it was called The Skulls, but. What was that called? Yeah. Let's but find it, out. It, like, the way they talk, they're all just so dialed up. And it's like silly, um, but I love it. Yeah. Um, th- that's what reminds me of the way it's written is in the style of like an uh, overly dramatic teenage horror movie. Damn it! From like 2002. <sighs> Sorry, guys. JoshuaJackson.com doesn't work. <laughs> JoshuaJackson.com. And this is how I find. I guess out. I let the domain name lapse. Wow. JoshuaJackson.com is definitely a virus. Wow. Oh no. Uh oh. Internet security alert. Please call this phone number for Can a free diagnosis. This isn't good. Go to the upper thing up there to just X out of it. There, yeah. It won't let me. <gasps> I can't control this window anymore. They, that's why there's a blue screen in between us now. I've lost control of my PC because I tried to go to JoshuaJackson.com. Your hard disk may have Trojan horse virus slash coob face. <laughs> I might have coob face? Where is that? Oh, no. Oh, no. Your hard disk may have Trojan horse virus slash Koob face. K-O-O-B-F-A-C-E. The Covenant. Thank you, Roche. Oh, the my covenant. God. Okay. Uh, well. Yes, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Well, I don't know what to do, everybody. My, my computer's gone rogue. <laughs> Give me one second here. <laughs> we, we may have a problem. Uh, this is crazy. Uh, shit. Is I don't think I can reason. close anything without losing the stream either. Damn you, Joshua Jackson. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Pop me? What is this? Yeah, that's that. Oh, yeah. And that. I think I got it. You How? have frozen over here. <laughs> is that bad? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's kind of bad. Like, it, it'll be fine. Oh, there you go. Um, I, I'm, I'm a little frustrated that Joshua Jackson allowed his domain yeah. to, to lapse. Yeah, why is th- there must be like a... Like official joshuajackson.net. Although, like, maybe they feel like they don't really need websites anymore because of like Instagram and stuff. Joshua Jackson can talk directly to the people. Yeah, that's true. Uh, he's a man of the people as well. Yeah. Here's the description of the covenant Four young men who belong to his supernatural legacy are forced to battle a fifth power long thought to have died out. Another great force they must contend with is the jealousy. Ooh, yeah. Th- th- that's the second book of the Raven Cycle, or is that the covenant? The covenant. Okay, I mean, Hell I guess yeah. it's it's telling that I I did not know which was which. Yeah. Um. All right, Great. I'm gonna go ahead and just bring these in. Okay. So there's not just a big blue box <laughs> in between us anymore. Yeah. Um, I uh, JoshuaJackson.com has failed me. So um, is your computer messed up now? No, I'm gonna have to crash Chrome. Uh huh. <laughs> so. Oh man. Yeah. So that's weird, huh? Yeah. Um, okay. Yikes. All right. Well, Well. let's leave it there. I've seemed to have be been the, the final victim of the Covenant or of the Boycraft. Uh, it seems like... <laughs> well, I'm reading the Boycraft right now, and it's really good. It seems that Boycraft found me. I like finally. it. Finally. Uh, I don't know how they found me. As you knew, it always would. Run for it, Marty. Or they always would. Um, all right. Any final thoughts on uh, the first half of Night Circus? Um, doable, but not loving it. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm gonna say I'm just gonna go with not loving it. Yeah, <laughs> like it's 
sure it's doable, but I, I'm not. I, I don't know if I would recommend that anybody stay up late to I attend the night it. circus. Yeah. Ooh. Hmm? Right. That's how people no, used to review things. Rave you know? or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait. Hey, I the did, Cirque du Rave almost turned me into a dreamer. I did open my <laughs> thing with like a corny... What do you think of that? Wait, what'd you say? Cirque du Rave oh, almost yeah, turned me into a dreamer. Oh, a snoozy dreamer. Almost turned me... Yeah. Me into a dreamer. Me. Uh, cool. Now I can drink milk every day. <laughs> um... That's just Kristen uh, in, enjoying the fact <laughs> that she's able to drink milk. That's not a reference to anything. I love it. Um, thank Don't you guys very much for listening. Yeah, thanks, guys. I hope that I'm you've watching. enjoyed the show. If you've been uh, watching us on YouTube, make sure you give us a little thumbs up down mm-hmm. there. Make sure you subscribe. Yeah. We do a shitload of podcasts. Yeah. Will and Bobby know everything. Studio Rejects. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I've been playing a lot of video games online. I'm currently mm-hmm. playing through the entire Zelda series, but yeah. I'll be doing future ga- uh, like different series in the future. Yeah. Um, and if you have any thoughts about the Night Circus, or if any, if you've got any books you want to recommend, if there are any thoughts you want to share with us about previous shows, mm-hmm. you can do that by talking to us on Twitter. I'm at Chrissy Pajamas, and I'm at Will Rogers Two Thousand. Yep, play uh, the camera. Ma- hey there. If you go to Facebook and look us up, or if you go on Twitter and you look at at Talk Bomb, mm-hmm. uh, you can like and follow us to keep up to date with all the projects that we're working on. Yep. Uh, we do bonus shows on Patreon, like we're going to be doing next week mm-hmm. as we take a break while we uh, finish the uh, Night Circus. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be doing a show next week on Patreon. That's the service where if you donate to us to help keep the network running, mm-hmm. you get bonus shows. So that's patreon.com slash talkbomb. Yep. And uh, if you would consider telling your friends and loved ones about our show, perhaps give us a review on iTunes or Stitcher or whatever you listen to us on. I mm-hmm. would greatly appreciate it. Chris would greatly appreciate would, it. Please. The president would probably call you personally. Probably. Probably. Yeah. I can't promise that. Yeah. But he definitely will. Yes, we can. <laughs> that president, though. Yeah. Uh, who's that? Well, no. That was Ob- I mean, Obama said, yes, we can. Was that an Obama impression? No, I don't know what voice that was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you, Mr. Roro, sir, for your recommendation of this book. I'm yes, sorry that you. I uh, have, have spent an hour demolishing it. Uh, I, I hope that that does not bother you. I do not intend it to. Follow uh, at Ro Capri on Twitter. Yeah, absolutely yeah. do that. Uh, and thank you uh, also for hanging out in the chat with us. Mm-hmm. He, he said initially he was going to be able to hang out for a couple minutes. Yeah. And then he would just have to jump to the podcast yeah, like, yeah, later. Yeah. Yeah. But he, he stuck around the whole time. Yeah, so thank thanks. you so much for hanging out with us, man. Yeah, got to uh, look at our ugly mugs. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and we will see you in a future show. Yes. But until then... Good talk, gang. Ooh, to camera? To camera. Meeting adjourned. Ha ha! Ha ha ha! I'm the leprechaun. I'm the leprechaun. I'm the le- I can't not look at myself doing it. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> right. Stop it. You're scaring me. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>